Hello, welcome, and thanks for taking some time to listen to this presentation of the Computer Science, Linguistics and the Language Degree Programme. Uh, my name's Martin Ems, I'm the course director. So CSLL, the Computer Science, Linguistics and the Language Degree is a combined study of computer science, a language, which will be either French, Irish, or Spanish, and the scientific study of language. Linguistics is the name people give to the scientific study uh, of language. And this will also involve computational linguistics, which is kind of the technological payoff from that scientific study in making computers do cool things with language. So there on a single slide is the basic idea of the degree. What I'm going to try and do is give you a quick tour through those uh, parts um, and then continue to say some more general points about the uh, degree program. So one of the parts is computer science. This is probably a part which people have the most intuitions about uh, before they enter the degree. What the mission is, what we're trying to accomplish here is to make you a master of the techniques and technologies that lie behind what you see on the screen of a computer. So computers can come in all shapes and sizes uh, from large desktops down to little tiny things you wear on your on your wrist. And many of the computers that um, are in the world are in fact things you never that you never see. Um, and they're much more ubiquitous in our lives than uh, possibly everyone realizes. So possibly today you had a quick look at the weather forecast to decide whether you might go for a walk around in your in your in your area where well, there was a, probably a big map there with with uh, with pictures of, of weather fronts moving around that would all have been generated by uh by a computer you may have decided not to go out and do some online shopping and uh the thing may have been reminding you or suggesting that you, having bought one thing you may like to buy another uh that, that kind of recommender system there'll be a computer be uh behind that so there's really uh, a tremendous amount of uh computer uh, influencing uh, people's lives and we're aiming to put you in the position of knowing the technologies and, te and techniques involved in making computers do all those things so that you might be able to help develop new cool things that computers can be uh, put to work to and to also not not only that but participate in not consi inconsiderable task of uh, keeping a lot uh, keeping running and uh, improving the, the current systems that are that are available now it's just an aspect of what of the way we go about this we don't actually assume you have a particular prior knowledge of uh computing so the course is designed to allow you to start from scratch in computing and there's quite a lot of care and attention put into making that um feasible um, to know whether someone's going to have an aptitude for uh, computing. Well, computing is a, is a kind of precision business. It's a very precise business. So in that sense, it has certain affinities with uh, mathematics. It's also a symbolic pro uh, business. So you're always writing down variables in computing programs. And that also has a certain amount of affinity uh, with mathematics. And there's a kind of an appreciation of uh, the structure of things, the analysis of uh of structure and um, for that reason we have this honours maths requirement which we use as a kind of proxy indicator that you have the sort of um, type of mind that's going to be one that uh, finds programming uh, congenial to you you have uh, an aptitude uh, for it which is not to say the degree program contains a great deal of math there is math in it but uh, that's the kind of proxy measure uh, we use. So that's a few words about the computer science part of it. You already will have been uh, studying a particular uh, language. Well, you'll continue that now in the university setting, studying uh, one of those languages. And you'll be pursuing that in the uh, you know language departments of Trinity College. They'll be seeking to bring you to a very high level uh, in that language. Um, a language which will, is sufficiently, you know, a higher level that you could even make it the uh, your professional contribution to the world and your offering to the world. Put it on your uh, uh, 
your CV. Uh, so these language departments will really put through put you through your uh, paces. They want they're certainly not going to rest content with any kind of um, you know holiday Spanish <laughs> anything like that. So um, it's a it, it's aiming to uh, it has high aspirations those language uh, departments. A distinctive element of the degree is that is, is that uh, for the most part students in their third year go and spend their third year as Erasmus exchange students. So we have exchange agreements with uh, a variety of universities uh, in Europe, um, which are universities which can offer the same spread of material that makes up this um, degree program. And you get to go there under the Erasmus scheme. They give you some certain amount of money. The EU gives you a certain amount of money. You don't have to pay any fees when you're over there to study um, over there. And one of the things the language departments will put, be putting effort into is enabling you to be able to uh, pursue a university you know, course um, when you're away in that uh, European country. So that's two parts. Now let's turn to the third part, linguistics or the scientific study um, of language. This is, the, this is a part which people possibly have the least um, knowledge of before entering um, the course. So language is a thing that we, it, it's hard to be aware of. We just, we, uh, we, 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 we acquire a language when we're very young without, without having to sort of consciously learn it. And it's somehow a bit like uh, uh, falling asleep. We don't have to learn how to fall asleep. You just, you just do it. And at a very young, young age, you can just, uh, you can just learn a, a, a language. So we're both, um, both familiar and yet unfamiliar with uh, with language. We do it all uh, instinctively. But people have studied language. They've studied it and made it an object of study. And just as in nearly every other part of the world, when people study things, they find out many things. Anyway, it turns out that with language, when you do study it scientifically, there's a whole variety of uh, surprising regularities and systems that uh, emerge. And that constitutes really the body of knowledge that um, is linguistics and the ongoing research um, in linguistics. This body of knowledge and these discoveries, they have a certain, they can be used as a kind of payoff for them in developing computer programs which seek to do uh, smart things with language. And that area is computational linguistics, um, making computers do smart things with, with language. And there'll be several modules throughout the degree program which have that as their particular aim. And this uh, degree program will um, put in your possession quite a bit of um, that knowledge. But just to give you some tiny glimpse into what I'm talking about in terms of what's uh, part of the regularities and systems in language, people look at the sounds of language and they find all kinds of patterns and regularities in the sounds of language, how they're made, the different languages and the different sounds that they possess. That's one of the things that the uh, linguistics department will be trying to make you acquainted with. It turns out there's various surprising systems and patterns in the words of languages, like what words are possible and what words are not, what they mean given the parts that they actually do have. Uh, grammars of language. So grammars aren't so remote from people's understanding if, you're, if you've been studying a, uh, a language and people's, there's systems in uh, grammars of languages. And in particular, when you compare the languages, uh, the grammars of different uh, languages. There's also systems in how the grammar of a language or the syntax of a, a language relates to what it means. All of these things are part and parcel of what the, um, the, the linguistics department will be um, making you acquainted with. So there's a whistle-stop tour of the components. Um, now that little picture there endeavours to give you a breakdown of the amount of time that will be spent, but it's 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 a slightly misleading picture because these boundaries aren't anywhere near as as sharp as uh, that indicates. So there's many more links between those these areas than you might think. So if you're mastering a foreign language, this gives you a feel for. Uh, grammar. Now, I know from my own case, I had no idea there was any such thing as grammar until I started to learn way back um, a, foreign uh, a foreign language. And then you start to notice some of the grammatical things uh, back in your, in your own language. So as someone who's studying another la language, you already have a big head start 
in linguistics. Conversely, when you're, in the, you're studying the sounds of language, language or phonetics in the ling in linguistics part of the course, you're really getting a deep understanding of how the sounds are made. And this gives you also quite a head start in mastering the pronunciation of the language that you are trying to master. You, you have a whole new way to uh, approach uh, understanding how to make these particular sounds, which you may not have otherwise had. Now, there's a more abstract relationship between these things, uh, between particularly between computer programming and linguistics, which may seem quite remote subjects. But what linguistics contains is a great deal of theorizing, uh, which takes the form of one thing being a substructure of another, a part of another. And very much the same style of thinking is involved in programming. You always have programs calling other programs, and you have data structures containing other data structures. So these, no these notions of recursion and subroutine and substructure are found in both areas. And in fact, so it turns out that the sort of thought processes that are involved, uh, people who find them quite easy to, to digest in linguistics find the same thought processes, the corresponding ones when they're doing computer programming, rather easy to digest and vice versa. So there's a kind of cast of mind that um, people have that it finds so quite possibly surprisingly, but on further reflection, isn't so surprising, uh, makes them adept at linguistics and adept at uh, computer programming. And then the most solid link between um, the parts is uh, computational linguistics. This is the technological payoff of some aspects of uh, linguistic study. So I've, I put this picture here, which gives you an impressionistic idea of what's involved. So in the middle of that picture, We've got a piece of linguistic analysis of uh, a sentence. Now, this can be put to use by various bits of computer programming to do some cool thing. So, for example, uh, speech synthesis or, for example, uh, translation. And then I've put at the bottom of that slide uh, some other things. What have, we, what have I written here? Speech recognition, uh, document categorization, uh, speaker identification. And in fact, the list really goes on. It's a very, very extendable list. Now, that's because language is such a ubiquitous thing and we use it for so many things throughout the day. The, uh, the list of things that you might wish to have a computer um, assist with uh, really goes uh, on and on. So now let me sort of turn to some more uh, general points. So let me talk about careers a little bit. Um, in the nature of the, the degree, the, the destinations people will go to are quite diverse. Um, let me just say one direction people can end up is they've mastered the, the computer science programming uh, part of the course. So they go and work um, as software engineers developing uh, applications. Um, and there's graduates who definitely have gone to do that. There's this specialized area, which is a very large area nonetheless of language technology, and they may um, go and work in that particular air, area, which is an area which is like always um, growing in size. So that's one thing that made it that people may find that they want to make their language skill is their particular thing they want to offer to the world. So they may end up working in um, translation or they've possibly gone to work um, uh, in the diplomatic corps. Um, some people have found themselves working in sort of multinational companies who are technological companies where that's kind of blend of having quite an affinity with languages and uh, quite a knowledge of technology is uh, quite to their, uh, quite an asset to them. Um, and quite a number of students actually go on to do uh, further research. They go on to do master's degrees, PhDs, particularly in the language, technology, computational, linguistic uh, area and while you're a participant in the degree actually you can be an intern and participate in various research projects that are ongoing in the linguistics department the computer science uh, department in those uh, areas um, once you finish this degree you uh, you've got a, quite a variety of, of of skills which you've been exercising throughout the degree one is problem solving problem which, uh, which, which is occurring in programming all, all the time, but also occurs uh, um, in linguistics. Programming itself, well, that's obviously a standalone skill. You have to do quite a lot of analysis in arriving at a 
program solutions. You have to analyze rather clearly and carefully. The same applies uh, in linguistics, in teasing things apart and understanding correctly what's going on there. There's great, great powers of analysis involved. There's a particular language that people um, have learned. And then I've got this self-reliance uh, item there. This relates in part to the third year uh, abroad. This is a part of the degree that um, nearly all students who've participated cherish very much. Um, it's also a, quite an impressive undertaking. So you go to a university abroad and uh, you conquer its bureaucracy, you attend lectures there, um, figure everything else uh, about that. And well, they feel, I think, when students return, they feel quite um, pleased with themselves at having conquered this, this challenge and survived it. Um, unscathed and I think they feel much more readily able to take on uh, further challenges and I'm pretty sure it also stands to them uh, when they're offering themselves to employers having this item on their uh, CV. Um, I should have probably shown that a bit earlier but there's this that's just a list of different destinations people have gone to just pointing out some of them have gone into uh, computer uh, jobs um, with companies uh, like, uh, like Google. Um, there's people who ended up working in the diplomatic corps that's probably involving um, in part their, their their language skills people have gone to the European patent office which is kind of a combination of their technological knowledge and their their uh, language skills I can't walk you through the um, the whole curriculum um, but there just to show the the, the the three parts we'll run through uh, the entire um, degree program. Let me just say some general points, um, interesting, slightly miscellaneous points. It's certainly an interdisciplinary degree, okay? This is um, possibly the most interdisciplinary degree that Trinity has to offer and it's so to a certain extent been appealing to some students who are sort of undecided between science and art so if you, if you may feel you have talents in both of these areas and it's, it's reluct you're reluctant to abandon uh, one of them to a certain extent this degree program it, it lives to a certain extent in both areas so to some extent it's suited people there um the degree program has tended to be um fairly gender balanced uh, possibly more so than uh, some uh, other degree programs. This slightly calls back to a point I just said. It fosters many talents. There's the problem solving aspect, for example, in computer science. There's conceptual ana analysis, for example, in linguistics. There's cultural uh, awareness that you, you, you'll have in certain kind of the, certain um, modules of the, the language course. There's the self reliance kind of aspect of uh, the year the year abroad so this is one aspect of this degree in as much as it puts you through your paces and exercises quite a variety um, of talents um, you won't be doing the same thing every day so you, in that sense you get quite a lot of bang for your buck out of your time um, at university actually possibly there's another thing i could have mentioned that was like about the curriculum there sometimes you'll be in courses uh with computer science students so your peers in that lecture will be computer science students. and sometimes you'll be in courses from the language department and your peers will be other students taking uh, languages and then corresponding linguistics so another interesting aspect of the degree is that you, the, the the peers that you have uh they vary from from lecture to lecture which is also possibly uh, an interesting um a varied aspect of the degree. Throughout the degree, there's opportunities for people to do projects, to develop ideas of their own and express their own ideas. So we'll be encouraging, uh, we'll be encouraging that. There's a research seminar that takes place, which we encourage students to come along to. And this gives them an opportunity to get a feel for uh, breaking developments in linguistics and particularly in computational linguistics. So there it is. I think it's a it's a challenging, um, useful 
uh, fascinating degree. Um, as the course director, you may well say, well, I would say that. Let me finally close by saying, first of all, please take a look at the course web pages. You will find there, obviously, more information about the degree. You'll also find telephone numbers and emails. And if you want to, don't hesitate to get in contact to find out more information. And finally, so you'll find mention made on those web pages of a possibility uh, whereby you can come to Trinity College for a day and participate in the degree programme. You get to meet some undergraduate students, you get to go to some of the uh, lectures and um, probably also speak to some members of staff. Um, it's a process they call shadowing, which makes it sound slightly strange, but that's that's what it is. It gives young people an opportunity to come to uh, the university and essentially try on the degree for a day. And uh, yeah, a number of students over the years have made a use of that and found it useful um, in assisting their decision process. So um, with that, once again, thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this and uh, goodbye. Thank you.